Traveling is a luxury for many Filipinos who are struggling to make ends meet. With the Philippines 7,107 islands and the choice what our country has to offer. And thanks to travel shows and to travel agencies, our eyes are open to the wonders of tourism, even without leaving our homes. And through these shows, we see how we can travel and explore the best way possible. ...agency program Asian Air Safari. St. John from WOW Philippines Travel Agency and Catherine De Castro along with Kian Kazemi of the... <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. You know, I would like to salute all of you for taking a very active role in promoting our country and maybe promoting the places that our countrymen are so. Rick, your travel agency is Wild Philippines Travel Agency. That's correct. You're a tour and travel operator, is that what you are? That's correct. Yes. We're, we're primarily a local uh, travel agency for the Philippines. We promote travel within the Philippines only. We don't do any international travel. We try to get tourists from other countries here so they can explore the Philippines and the, the islands that it has to offer. Country, and we try to stress that through the 300 plus websites that we have to promote tourism here in the Philippines. Okay, and of course. Okay, Rick, when you promote the Philippines, are there destinations that people top of mind who are coming in have already uh, as part of their uh, destination uh, uh, that they want to go to or you offer them the places that they should visit? How, how do you balance that kind of, of uh, mm -hmm. uh, passenger? He has an idea because he's seen something on Fit and Fit or on, on Joy's program or on, on uh, Travel Time even. So how, how do you balance that in promotion and marketing? Well, when we receive a, a request from a client uh, looking for a place in the Philippines to travel, the first thing we want to ask is, what are they looking for? Are they looking for a lot of activity? Do they want uh, quiet time? Are they looking for, uh, you know, a place where it's somewhat quiet, but they can have, uh, you know, tours, day tours, and that sort of things, so that we know exactly where to put them. If people are looking for a lot of action and beach, then we'll, we'll recommend Barakai. If they're looking for more quiet and laid-back atmosphere, we'll recommend Palawan. If they're looking for a place where they can they can have the beach, yet they want to go on day two. Activities like that. So again, it really depends that out. Uh, work uh, as a package for, let's say, a group of 10 people who want to go to an island that has not been heavily publicized yet? Absolutely, yes. You, you can create a package for Absolute, that? Absolutely, yeah. Within a day or so, we can create the package. We'll do the research necessary. Mm -hmm. In fact, we'll even go there ourselves if we have to, to investigate it. Okay. Rick, uh, one of the things that he mentioned is culture or cultural presentations mm -hmm. or being a part of the cultural celebration of the places that you visit. Do you find that we have those in the Philippines as, as a maybe the way uh, Bangkok, Bangkok would present it, uh, or, or Malaysia. They have like village uh, theaters where they actually stage a program that, that's like already uh, a variety show and where people go there and, and watch it and pay a certain fee. Do we have something like that in the Philippines? Are you able to direct your, your uh, even local uh, tourists or foreign tourists to watch a regular uh, what uh, cultural dance show? Yeah, it's interesting that you bring that up. We were talking about that the other day. There, there are a few resorts on Boracay that offer some cultural uh, dances and allow and also some of the resorts there, but uh, not as much as I'd like to see. Mm -hmm. I really think the resorts should focus more on on that to bring the culture of the Philippines uh, to the forefront. That's something that we don't see a lot of. Uh, the, so many of the resorts are so commercialized and uh, it's, it's almost antiseptic in a, in a sense. Uh, when he's talking about flying to these other destinations uh, and the infrastructure not being there, 
Uh, for me, that's also true. Um, Baraka gets a lot of play because it's, you know, it's really uh, been built up over the past 10 years. Uh, but even with Baraka, there's a lot of infrastructure problems there. And this is one of the things that we would like to see the Philippines really get involved in because the more we can do for the infrastructure, the more people will want to travel in here. Uh, when you have to, uh, in different places of plow and travel two, two and a half, three hours by uh, Jeep or something, there's a lot of people that they just don't want to do that. They, they really want to get to their destination and they want to come back as quick as possible because time is of an essence to them. They might only have three days or four days for a trip. And they might be old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, it, it presents a problem. Yeah. So if we could do more for the infrastructure, it would allow more people actually to be able to travel, which is, again, the more people that are traveling, the more money that's being spent. Mm -hmm. And it's better all the way around for everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is, is sea travel also a way that people want to travel now? You see a lot of these uh, luxury uh, crews that, that they speak about. Is that something that we in the Philippines have not maximized as a mode of travel for tourists? Uh, I, I don't think so. We, Why? We, we, don't, we don't get many calls for it. Uh, every now and then somebody will ask the question. Uh, ah, nobody has developed a, an, an, an inter-island uh, cruise. Yeah, you would need ports in all these places. Oh, but we don't have the ports, you that's the, the reason. Yeah, you don't have the ports. And, and also it's very slow, so that means that people would have to take something like a seven-day tour or something like that. Very slow because of the kind of vessel we yeah, have? Yeah, because of the type of vessel it is. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, it wouldn't be a speedboat, it would be a, a luxury liner, some type of cruise ship. But we yacht. can get the luxury liner docked in, in, in uh, mm -hmm. South Harbor. Yeah. Can they? Yes. The, yes. the Queen? Yes, yes. Yeah, they can? Well, even like on Baraque, there's a, there's a trimaran there. Uh, it's one of the largest yachts in the Philippines. Uh -huh. And, and it, it travels from Baraque, Palawan, all around the different islands, and it will take people on these trips. But it's very hard to get uh, that because it's fully booked most of the time. Oh, Rick, what about you? As a, you're in the agency, in, in the travel aid tour and travel uh, business. What is a hassle to you as a tourist? For me, it's uh, actually, uh, it's not so much the delayed flights, mm -hmm. it's actually not having enough flights. Uh, especially during Holy Week and mm -hmm. busy times of the year, there just are not enough flights mm -hmm. to accommodate the, the tourists. Mm -hmm. uh, many times we can get them a hotel room, we just can't get them a flight there. Absolutely. Locally? Locally, uh -huh. yeah. Really? Yeah. So, so there is basis for a lot of airlines now Absolutely. Uh, they, doing the short run, the short hop. Yeah, even even during Holy Week and Christmas, what I would like to see is they actually increase the number of flights to places like Palawan and mm -hmm. in Boracay. Again, we can get the hotel room, but we can't we can't get the flight. Mm, that's great. Uh, Palawan, where? Uh, it, that's easy for me. Palawan. Palawan, anywhere in Palawan. Yeah, because it's it's very it's relatively undeveloped. It's very beautiful. It's quiet. And you can see the stars again. Mm -hmm. It's very good. Thank you very much. That's all the time we have. Talk to us again next week on Talk Back.